Hi, it's Nero here, buyer's agent and director of Investment Rise. And today I want to talk about what's happening around the property market as I record this at the start of September. Now, you may have already seen some pretty scary headlines like this one. House price plunge spreads with biggest monthly decline in 39 years. And when you see these headlines, it can definitely be scary, it can definitely be off-putting. But as an investor, you have a huge advantage because you have the ability, if you want to, to look past these scary headlines, analyze the data and, and actually see what's happening for yourself. And my aim is to help you understand that in this episode. So to begin with, let's have a look at some core logic data about what's happening around the country. So here we have the CoreLogic RP Data Daily Home Value Index Monthly Values. And again, I'm gonna focus on houses here, okay? And let's begin with Sydney. Now, Sydney last month had a drop of 2.6%. So what that means is that the median house price dropped 2.6% in the month of August, okay? Now, what that means on an annual basis is that the median house price has dropped 2.5% from this time last year. So that means that anyone who has bought median priced houses in the last 12 months, the odds are that their house is now worth slightly less than what they paid for it. Okay, now again, this is median price point data and stay with me until the end because I'll show you how this can sometimes be misleading. Okay, let's have a look at Melbourne. Melbourne last month, Median house price dropped 1.5%, and that means for the 12 months to date, house prices have now dropped 2.7%. Okay, so again, our biggest two markets, as what's being reported in, in the media, are definitely struggling the, the most. But let's have a look at Brisbane, which includes the, the Gold Coast, and median house prices last month dropped 2.2%, but for the year, they're still up 17.9%. Adelaide, According to this data, the median house price dropped 0.2%, but year-on-year -year prices are up 22.6%. Perth last month dropped 0.2%, but is up 5.1% for the, the year, okay? And if I scroll down here to Darwin, we can see last month, it was the only capital city market where the median house price rose it rose 1.1% and for the year prices are up 5.6%. Canberra was, is, was down 2% last month, but it's still up 6.2% for the year. Hobart also down 1.7% last month, but up 6.2%. So when you look at this data, it looks like pretty much everywhere prices are, are dropping, okay? And that could easily be the misleading conclusion you take from, from this data, okay? When you look at this median price point data and then you look at that, the headlines, it can be very off-putting, okay? It can be very, very scary. So now what I want to do is actually look at one of these capital city markets and give you a bit of a blow-by-blow -blow of what's happening from a suburb by suburb perspective. And again, I'm gonna use core logic data, okay? I think as an investor, you need to stick to one source of data when you're comparing what's going on. Otherwise, you can easily make some wrong decisions. So I'm gonna stick with core logic data. So here we have, again, some core logic data breaking down what's been happening on a suburb by suburb basis, looking at the Brisbane market, okay? I'm just picking the, the Brisbane market because I, I still believe that overall, Brisbane has some great fundamentals, as do many of the markets around the country. But if you were to just look at the median price point data, you might think, oh, you know, maybe you, you've missed out, okay? So this particular graph here shows you what's happening across Brisbane, across the, the suburbs, okay? And so you can see here that the uh, sort of the pink red lines, uh, red colors rather, they highlight suburbs that are falling in value. And then anything that's sort of gray or white is kind of indicating that it's price neutral. And anything that's purple, and the more purple it is, shows that property prices are rising, okay? Now immediately then when you look at this, this should raise some questions because if the median price point is actually falling in, in Brisbane or fell last month, then how come there is still so much purple on this graph, okay? And what it shows you here is if you look at it, these pink areas, okay, they are all some of the more 
higher priced areas in Brisbane. And these are the suburbs that are bringing down the median price point. Okay, it's because in Brisbane, a lot of the top end suburbs, they're the ones that are starting to plateau, starting to go backwards slightly, okay? And then that's what's impacting on the median price point. But a lot of these suburbs in the middle ring and the outer ring are still showing a lot of strong price growth, okay? Yes, this data is for the last three months, okay? But I think what you're gonna see is that different suburbs are gonna perform differently. I've said this time and time again on past episodes, okay? And so median price point data sure is an indicator, but it doesn't mean that the entire market is struggling. But as an investor, you have the great opportunity to be able to sift through this data, invest unemotionally, and find those pockets that are still doing very well and also have good long-term fundamentals, okay? And that's what I'm trying to show you here, is that if you look through the actual data behind the median price point, which is essentially what the media then focuses on, right? Okay, you will find that it can actually be totally misleading, okay? Some suburbs here, as you can see, are not doing that well, but others are still holding up, still doing really, really well. But then what about regional markets? Well, you're probably seeing headlines there talking about how regional markets are struggling as well. But when you sift through the data, what you'll find is it's the premium locations, the locations that have grown the most, they are the ones that are struggling right now, okay? For example, Byron Bay, okay? Now, yes, that's a location that's had some phenomenal growth and now it's starting to go back slightly, okay? But I don't think it's gonna to return to where prices were pre-pandemic, all right? But just because Byron Bay might not be doing so well, maybe Coffs Harbour is another location that isn't doing uh, so well right now, only because they've experienced such phenomenal growth in the last 12 months, okay? That does not mean that all regional markets are doing badly, okay? There are many markets right now that we're finding for our clients where you can get property for under $700,000, even under $600,000, even under $500,000, okay? Where there are multiple buyers competing for properties. There's a shortage of stock. Real estate agents are screaming that they have more buyers than, 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 than properties, okay? And they cannot meet the, the, the demand. These are the markets you want to be targeting. These are the markets that are gonna buck the trend. These are the markets that you will then hear about in 12 months time and you'll be going, how come no one told me about those areas, okay? So you've gotta really, as an investor now, understand that we're really in what I would call a very normal market. And what's a normal market? It's a market where some areas are struggling, some areas are sort of flat, and other areas are doing really well, okay? And so when you understand that, when you understand that you're not investing in a median priced uh, property necessarily, right? You're not investing in an entire city market, you're investing in a particular suburb. And that's where suburb location is so important, regardless of whether you're looking at a regional area or even a capital city. Okay, now I've spoken to you about, about Brisbane, I've spoken about the median prices, I'm showing you literally how, according to core logic data, the very data that the media is, is using to talk about property crashes is revealing that different suburbs are doing very well. Okay, but here's a now a news article that really kind of paints a very different picture. Now this is an article that talks about uh, a property in Springfield Lakes, which is in the west of Brisbane, okay? And this is an auction that happened just last weekend. All right, and here's what the article says. There are 16 registered bidders here today and they've done their due diligence, Mr. Hamilton said. We know it's in great condition. We're not looking to damage the spirits of everyone else here. It's a quality home, that's for sure. And when it comes to location, it's arguably the best location in Springfield Lakes overlooking the Bushland Reserve. Mr. Bailey left the auction to show the man the report while the remaining bidders took the home to a $1.26 million sale, making it the top Springfield Lake sale of the year and just $55,000 below the suburb record that was set during the boom in October of last year. An auction of this size with so many bidders tells me that news that the market is crashing and no buyers are interested in property in Queensland is clearly not the case, Miss Bailey said. And it's not a cheap property. So. I'm literally showing you now data about properties, areas, and how different areas are performing differently. And that's the message that I really want you to take away from, from this episode is that yes, 
we are no longer in the massive nationwide boom that we were in last year, okay? Now, that kind of boom only happens once in 20 years, maybe once in 30 years, all right? And so if we've missed that, okay, so be it. But that does not mean that there aren't opportunities for you to jump in and get good quality properties with good scope for capital growth. And also where it's so easy to get these properties rented and where rents are rising, all right? And as an investor, you can start sifting through the headlines, sifting through the data and making more informed decisions, okay? Because ultimately, if you're looking to build financial security or financial freedom through property, then you've got to start divorcing the headlines and divorcing the emotions from data and make investing decisions based on actual facts and figures. Hi, it's Nero here again and thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw and you're looking for a proven recipe, a blueprint on how to build a property portfolio that gives you passive income, then click the link below this video and get a copy of my book, Wake Up Wealthier, How to Build a Property Portfolio that pays you an income each and every month. Okay? When you click the link and you download your book, you can get both the digital version and the audio version in case you don't like reading. All right, so I used to sell this book for $49, but right now I'm making it totally free. Why? Because I want more people to get this information and I know that a segment of you will then like what you see in the book and choose to reach out to find out more about our services. But even if you don't, if you're serious about building a property portfolio that pays your passive income, then you really want to get my book, Wake Up Wealthier. It contains the secrets that I have fine-tuned over the last 19 years. It's totally free for a limited time. Click the link below.